syndication is one of the sexiest terms out there for new apartment investors. Why? Because it's a strategy that allows you to leverage other people's money so that you don't have to be the one putting up all the money in a deal. But while syndication sounds like a really easy way to get into apartments, we know differently and we're gonna share a different strategy with you that'll get you into action a lot faster with a lot less capital up front. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button below and ring the bell so that you get a notification every time we upload a new video, every week. I think in order for you to understand what we're even talking about, can you describe like what is syndication? Absolutely. When you have a deal that you can't fund all on your own, you're gonna go raise money from other people. Other people who are gonna be passive investors, those are called limited partners or LPs. Passive as in I just get to sit home and do nothing and my money's just at work for me or passive as in, I don't know, I'm just not that involved. <laughs> no, they're not involved at all. You and whoever else is gonna be actually actively running the deal with you, you guys are called the general partners. Now the general partners are typically the ones who are out there building the relationships, finding the deals, making offers, crunching numbers, doing due diligence, getting financing, closing, and then operating the property, whether it's stabilized or value add. That's the general partners. You are the ones who are literally doing all the work. It is the absolute most active role that there is. And for that, you get a percentage of the deal. Well, that sounds awesome. Why wouldn't I want to do it that way? Well, for starters, investing in apartments has a really steep learning curve. I mean, there is just, there's just a lot to know. That's true. Syndication adds a level of complexity that makes it very difficult for people to even actually get into their first deal. Okay, so what's the alternative then? So the alternative is called joint venture partnership. And a joint venture partnership, which we will refer to sometimes as JV, that's when a small number of investors, no more than five, but ideally two to three, get together and they do the deal together. So they're usually pooling their resources, their capital together, and they're gonna actively pursue and close that deal and operate it as a team where everyone is active. Now, with them doing two to three people, that means the deals are probably gonna be smaller than some 500 apartment unit, right? Absolutely. But they own more of it then. That's it, they own more of it and it allows people to get in so much faster and actually get started. And you know, the benefit of getting started is- Then you can do the next one. Yeah, you can do the next one, you build credibility, you build knowledge. Totally. Like that first one is like, Okay, so with only two to three of them, the deals are gonna be smaller, right? But like, what are the benefits of that? Why wouldn't I, why would I wanna go with just two to three people and get a smaller apartment building, like a 10 unit or something versus going after a 120 unit? Totally, like fair question. So one of the things that's so sexy when you're new, you're like, oh, I wanna own a 100 unit building. Well, of course, right? Who wouldn't? But here's the deal. There's a lot of things that you're gonna learn along the way. Can you imagine walking into a bank and saying, well, I've never bought an apartment building before, but will you go ahead and give me a $10 million loan? They're <laughs> gonna really laugh. So what banks and what other investors are gonna put their money with you, what they wanna see is that you have a proven track record. Well, how do you create that track record? By doing deals that you can actually do and close on and building up that credibility over time. So maybe you do start with a five or a 10 unit mm -hmm. building. Yeah and you get experience, you get credibility, and you start getting cash flow. And that is really where everything begins. And sometimes everyone wants to start right with the big ones. I get it, like n nobody wouldn't want to, but the chances of you ever actually closing is almost zero. And that's such a shame. Like you deserve to actually get into apartment investing in a way that is truly doable and it's really fun. It's frustrating if you're going after something that is just not attainable, mm -hmm. right? So we believe so strongly in helping people get wins that we just wanna get this message out there so that you know, forget the 100 units for a little bit, like go build some smaller ones and like get in the game and then you're gonna work your way up to there and then banks are gonna be like, oh wow, you have all this experience? I'll absolutely make that loan to you. Okay, so when there's all this talk about people doing deals and getting into apartments, why do you think that they lean towards syndication first? Well, here's my theory. We get so many people that come to us and they're like, I've never done a deal and I wanna do a syndication. And we're like, why do so many people wanna do it? Here's our theory. Right now, I said it before, right? Syndication is a sexy term and it's a marketing term, unfortunately. There's a lot of gurus out there that will 
spout syndication all day long. You can get into your first deal, you don't need the money, you just bring the deal and you can syndicate. So, and the reason they say that is because everybody's biggest hang up is about not having enough money to do the deal themselves. And so they're like, oh, well, I don't have a $500,000 down payment, I don't have a $2 million down payment. And they're like, oh, syndication is the solution. And look, it's just, it's a marketing ploy because the reality is, less than 1% of people who are starting off in apartment investing ever get a deal if they're starting with syndication. And that is a very sad reality, but it's just a marketing thing. So people can get them into their program, teach them syndication, and then they never do a deal. Okay, so it's true though. So let's just say you're already out there and you have all the, the information about syndication. So you, you know what syndication looks like, but you've been spinning your wheels. and. Make a comment below and let us know because we literally, we our students, are, they're getting under contract on their deals in, in as little as 90 days. So that could be you instead of out there spinning your wheels trying to figure out the syndication world. So put a comment below and let us help you out. So what actually is difficult about syndication? What makes us say these things, right? There's a lot of friction in the beginning because you could spend anywhere from eight to twenty, thirty thousand dollars trying to put a private placement memorandum in place. It's, it's called a PPM. That's one of the very first reasons why, because there's all these laws that you have to follow and this private placement memorandum, hiring a security attorney, right? Yep, attorney. <laughs> hiring a securities attorney <laughs> to help you through that process can also be very costly. So it actually takes more capital than you might think to get started in syndication. And you're dealing with complex SEC rules and you don't want to mess with the Securities and Exchange Commission. If you break those rules, the penalties are huge up to and including jail time. So like when you're brand new, don't you have enough to worry about, about just how to do a deal without worrying about Going what jail. if I break it and end up, you know, end up in orange? <laughs> okay, so when dealing with the SEC, aren't you also very, very, very restricted on who in the hell you can even market to? You're so restricted. So there's these rules called 506B and 506C and they really establish and govern, one, can you even advertise at all? And two, if you can advertise, which is a very specific one, which is hard to do, you can only advertise to people who are considered accredited investors. Well, you just shrunk your population down to, you know, this tiny, tiny little thing. Because why though? What, what does it take to be an accredited investor? Well, to be an accredited investor, so you're dealing with individuals that have a net worth of at least a million dollars, not including their personal residence, or someone who makes at least $200,000 a year, like year over year, or a couple that makes 300,000. Anyway, there's all these rules about who you can approach and whether you can advertise or not. And if you're doing a 506B and you advertise, you could be in big trouble. So there's just, there's a lot to learn. And do you really wanna be bothered with all that? No, I don't wanna be learning something new and fearing that I'm going to jail. <laughs> Right? I mean, here's the deal. Like you can build relationships. Like that's the whole benefit beauty of the JV. Yeah. Right. By the way, we're, we're limited partners on a lot of syndication deals. And the only reason why we're able to do that is because we know how to assess the deal, assess the people yeah. who are the general partners in the deal and really mitigate our risk. So the fact that we were active investors for as long as we have been really serves us when it comes to analyzing those types of deals. So even as a limited partner, there's a lot of, oh, I just put my money to it and I- That's I, a good point. Right, but that's not true. You, yeah. you wanna make sure if you're, as an accredited investor, usually the minimums are 50,000 or $100,000 to invest into one of these assets. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not just gonna put $100,000 out there blind like a cowboy, like, woo, let's do this. I wanna make sure my money's in the right place and that the general partners know what they're doing. So there's a lot of complexity to it. And you still have to know how to analyze the deal and how to analyze the team that's gonna be managing the asset and whether or not they're gonna be managing it in your favor, right? Yeah, Which, and how, because how much say do we have? Once you become a limited partner, like you're, you're literally putting all of your, the control in the hands of the general partners because you do not have voting rights, limited partners, you basically put up your money and shut up. That's yeah, why that's it's it. put limited. Up. <laughs> you, put, you put up, then shut up. <laughs> Is that, can we say that? <laughs> I think we could say that <laughs> since it's our channel. So ultimately, I mean, are we saying that syndication is bad or wrong? Yeah, no, not at all. Like, in fact, like we do it. We even just had one of our students do close on a syndication deal that they were the general partners. It's not that we're saying it's wrong. It's just that 
You know, Jen and I have such a huge passion for helping new investors cross the finish line and actually get into a deal that that is why we preach so much. Like don't start with syndication because it's going to take you so long to figure it out that you're probably going to give up and go do Mary Kay or something. Like you're going to go do something else. And we just don't want that. If you for do you. Mary Kay, we're not insulting you. It's just not. No, I mean, we buy that. Mary Kay, but we just, you know, you do. You, yeah, you haven't you seen my products in there? God, you marry someone you think you know them. <laughs> Sorry. The whole thing is, if you got into investing to be a, an apartment investor, we want that for you. Nothing wrong with syndication. In fact, well, Jen already said it, we teach it to our students, but not until they've already done a couple of deals, because at that point, the learning curve is no longer too steep to add that one thing in. But when you're brand new, I mean, it's just unlikely you're ever going to do it. And yeah. that stinks. I just want to end it on this note. When we think about the JV situation versus syndication, our method, our way, looking at all of our students in the past, in 2021, they have literally formed together, put together 150 JV deals, like JV opportunities between themselves for $37 million in real estate. And they're getting $2 million a year in cash flow amongst all of them. Like that's an aggregate number that we've rounded up just like the 150 JV partnerships, but that's 150 deals that would not have been going on if they were still going down the path of syndication. We maybe would have seen half of that, right? We maybe would have seen 75 deals in a syndication environment because it takes a little bit longer and it does take more capital to get up there. So now that we've given you this rundown between JV or syndication, we, I, I, wanna, I want them to know what's going on with our students. So we just recapped 2021, looked at all the deals our students did. And in the course of that year, like our students did 150 joint venture deals together. 150, we had one that did a syndication. And I think part of the reason is that our specialty is, is really working with people who are brand new to apartment investing. So we're not taking people who've been doing it for 20 years and, and, and teaching them something new. We're teaching the people who've never done a deal before or they've done smaller deals and they're trying to get into their first apartment building. And that is how they're doing it. That's how they're closing deal after deal after deal. And all of them are getting experience mm -hmm. and credibility as they're going along their journey. And our one person who closed a syndicated deal, that's awesome. Chances are the next one's gonna end up being a JV. Why? Because it's faster and easier to get in. I'm sure that in 2022, we're gonna see several syndications within our group because we have a lot of people going into year two. And now they're like, you know what? I get it. I know it. I've done a couple of apartments in 2021. Now I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And I think that's gonna be great. Totally. If you do want to get into multifamily real estate investing, but you're not sure what's the first step, the second or the third, you can click the link in the description below and a member of our team will hop on the phone with you and talk about your goals, your resources, and how we can hold your hand and get you to where you want to be. The other thing we want to tell you is that we have a free Facebook group. It's called Multifamily Real Estate Investing. So if you want to be around people that are like you on the journey, looking to learn, come join us in that Facebook group. We do tons of free education and content there. And every week, Jen and I make ourselves available for a question and answer session. It's live, it's in Zoom, we're face to face. You gotta come to the Facebook group, register, go to events, and then we'll see you there. But any questions you have about real estate, we're there to answer them for you. All right, thank you so much for watching. If you wanna learn how we do apartment investing, watch this video right here, and we'll see you guys next week.